Well, now that every part is clean, um, replacement parts are in hand, I'm ready to start putting this thing back together, seeing a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. I didn't show this on the disassembly because the quill housing was still attached to my bench bracket, but once I pulled it off, I removed this worm that is used um, to engage with a gear on the ram that allows you to tilt the head left and right. Once I cleaned it all up, uh, I can put it back into the housing now. Once I got the key lined up with the worm, I just hold the shaft in place with this set screw, making sure I don't tighten it too much. Normally, I would want to put the spindle back into the quill before I put it into the housing, but I'm going to need a press to do that. And I've got an idea that should work, so I'm going to go ahead and insert the quill into the housing first. Of course, all of that is predicated on me actually getting the quill into the housing. I at this point have no idea why I am um, facing this resistance and also why I'm struggling to even get it back out. Jeez. Oh, what the? I'm assuming there must be a burr somewhere. Perhaps it's on the top of the quill or it's in the housing opening. So I'm just going to take a file and a stone and see if I can't um, detect anything and at least smooth it out if there is something there. It's still getting jammed up almost immediately after inserting it into the housing. I managed to actually get it into the housing, but it still feels kind of stiff. I'm thinking that might just be because I'm holding this thing horizontally. The original quill stop knob on this machine was missing, so this replacement is what I'm trying to fit in here, but it is too wide to fit into the slot in the front of the housing. So I'm just taking a file and filing down the sides of it until uh, it moves in there freely without any resistance. <laughs> And with that on there, it's still a little stiff. I'm going to address that in a bit, but uh, it is moving a lot freer than it had been. A little more filing, and now that quill stop knob fits into that slot perfectly. I was originally going to reuse the original quill lock and just make a new handle for it, but I opted to buy this improved lock from H&W Machine instead.
after remounting the quill housing onto my bench bracket, I'll leave it here for the remainder of the assembly, including uh, inserting the quill skirt around the quill. I really need to have the spindle inside the quill in order to go any further. So I got an idea of how I could press it in using the force of the quill itself. I temporarily installed the quill pinion shaft and the handle. Now by inserting the spindle from below, I'll put some blocks underneath it and use the spindle handle to pull down on the quill and hopefully it'll press the spindle up inside of it. What I thought was going to happen didn't happen. As I pulled down on the handle when the spindle made contact with that block, it actually lifted up my entire workbench, which is four feet by eight feet of nothing but two by fours and plywood. So off to plan B, which kind of sucked because it meant I had to hold up that quill housing next to the ram, which I'm glad I hadn't taken apart, and uh, get it bolted and secured. So the idea here is the same. I'll get the spindle started up into the quill. Put some blocking underneath it, pull down onto the quill handle, and it'll push it right up into the, the, uh, the quill. And of course, it matters that the turret bolts are tightened all the way. And with all of that secured now and tightened down, pulling down the handle, uh, push that spindle right up inside the quill and seated it rather nicely. And I'll put the nose piece on now before I take it back over to the bench. Back over at the bench, the next thing I'm going to do here is put on this felt washer and then the um, stop screws for the quill skirt. Since I did not replace the bearings with sealed bearings, um, I need to have this washer up here and soak it with oil. Oil drips down and lubricates the spindle bearings. My problems with this quill are not over. It still feels extremely stiff, way stiffer than what I remember before I took it apart and way stiffer than what I think it should be. So off camera, I opted to go ahead and take the quill back out of the housing. I did discover yet another burr on the inside of the quill housing and um, was able to clear that up. Thinking that the original quill skirt might have also been contributing to the stiffness, I went ahead and ordered a new one. The new one, the tabs on it were a little bit too long for the slots in the side of the quill. So I just used my Dremel to file those down a little. And then once again, install the felt washer and the two screws that go into the top of the quill. So now I'm installing this power feed cradle assembly. I think that's what you call it. Uh, I didn't disassemble this. I just cleaned it real well. It engages with some gears on the side, so you just have to kind of fiddle it a little bit until everything meshes. There's a 
double set screw that goes in from the side that captures that um, shaft on the cradle assembly. You just got to make sure you don't get them too tight. Next, I'll put in the um, power feed engagement lever. Um, there's this pin that's got a hole in it. You have to line up uh, the end of the shaft on this lever just right so it uh, captures it. And since I need to oil my spindle bearings, I needed to f get a uh, new oil tube. Mine was missing uh, originally. I did notice that the power feed cradle there kept hitting the tube. So I uh, used some pliers to try to put a small bend in it. Um, I think it's still going to hit it, but it shouldn't block it. After uh, putting on a little bit of grease here, I can now permanently reinstall the uh, quill pinion shaft. And on the left side of that pinion shaft is where I need to install the power feed overload clutch. There's a spacer first and then there's this bevel gear which you have to drive onto um, another worm. I just used a, a piece of copper pipe. And of course, a snap ring. If you've watched any of my other videos on this bridge port, you'll know how much I hate these things. <clears throat> I fully understand that these things are a necessary evil. They they work, um, they do what they're intended to do, but they suck to get on, they suck to get off. Uh, of it maybe it's my pliers, or maybe it's just me. This was a snap ring I knowingly destroyed um, disassembling this. Um, even Barry from H&W Machine suggests that you're going to end up destroying it, so just order a new one, which is what I ended up doing. Finally, some success. And... I hope everyone appreciates the editing that I had to do in order to keep this video PG. Turning my attention back to the right side of the quill, I am installing the clock spring. The clock spring is a flat spring coiled, and on the end of it there is a, a hole in it that has to line up with this tab. Yep. The intent of the clock spring is to act as a counterbalance to the quill so it can be held in position wherever you leave it without using the lock. So I need to rotate this clockwise about one and a half turns. Now I can put on the pinion shaft hub sleeve and uh, secure it at the end of the shaft with this screw. This quill handle is not a factory one. It was given to me by a local retired machinist that I became friends with recently. It has a spring in it that makes it uh, really easy to reposition the handle anywhere you want it. If you have a vertical mill similar to this, what kind of quill handle do you use? Leave a 
comment. Let me know. Next, I'm installing the micrometer screw. Um, first goes on a snap ring and then a jam nut. And then after that, a quick nut. This has a little button on the side of it that allows you to move it up and down on the screw very quickly. Once I have it in place, um, I'll secure the snap ring into the groove near the bottom of the screw. After I insert the feed trip plunger and making sure that it's moving freely, next is this feed trip lever. The lever pivots on a pin uh, that I have to line up with this hole on the housing. The original feed trip lever was missing when I acquired this mill. It has to line up perfectly or the pin won't go through. So I'm trying a few different things here, like this uh, Allen key, to see if I can't get it lined up and started and then try inserting the pin. So I took a little break, came back to it, and then decided to try to use this tapered punch and I seem to have a little bit better luck getting everything lined up. And with that in place you can kind of see a little bit of how that lever operates between the plunger and the screw. There's some companions to that trip lever at the top, this plunger, and it was hard to see, but there's this uh, reverse trip ball lever that goes in after that and then is covered with this cap. These are part of the stop mechanisms for the power feed. This bevel gear and this bracket with the handle on it are part of the feed reverse and feed trip mechanism. These components here on the left side are part of a overload clutch mechanism. These components couple the power feed gearing to the uh, quill pinion shaft. Then this cover secures everything to the housing. Engaging the trip lever actuates the power feed clutch. I need to make an adjustment on a set screw on that feed trip lever Pushing down on that micrometer screw should cause that trip handle to release. I'm just putting back this uh, very small key that's set into the uh, feed worm shaft. That key mates with a keyway in this a hand wheel clutch. I'm going to install this feed reverse knob uh, now. It'll make some of the rest of this a little bit easier.
there's this very tiny steel ball that thankfully I didn't lose during the disassembly that goes in next, followed by a spring and a cap. This uh, rides in a detent. And I want to make sure I don't make that spring too tight, so I'm testing the three different positions for that detent before I tighten up the set screw on the collar. And then the last component on the quill housing here is this power feed speed selection lever. And I also opted to replace the original micrometer scale. Just need to make sure I put the longer screw on the top and the shorter one on the bottom. The short screw only engages with maybe two or three threads, but it has to be short so it doesn't interfere with the feed trip plunger that's directly behind it. At this point, I, I wanted to do a little testing just to make sure things were working the way that I think they're supposed to. So I'm doing um, some manual testing of the power feed. I'm just uh, engaging the gears at the top of the quill housing in that cradle manually with, with my hand. I don't think the clutch is engaging with the pinion shaft. So I'm forcing it here. This is not a permanent fix. It's just more of a diagnostic measure. But when I force it, you can see how the hand wheel now is causing the uh, quill handle to move. And rather than replace components, there's actually a very simple fix for this. I found a video that was published by H&W Machine the first thing that I need to do is remove this pivot pin on the back of the clutch lever. Next, I just need to drill a hole and then tap it for a set screw and a jam nut. And then I can reinstall the clutch back onto the quill pinion shaft and then uh, install the cover, the newly modified cover. You see I have a uh, screw temporarily in that newly tapped hole. So rather than have that clutch lever pivoting in a fixed location, I can now tighten this set screw to um, take up some of the slack caused by what I'm assuming is a worn out spring. And that was a fairly simple and cost effective fix. Just need to tighten down that jam nut and we're all set. And with that, the quill housing is completely reassembled. On to the next piece. Thanks for watching.